What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T Claus. My name is Tevi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information, stay for the random clips. So I closed out last week's video recommending keeping a bit of cash on the sideline as a pullback was likely imminent. This was due to the fact that the broad market had been seeing upward momentum these past few weeks. The thing is, you can't keep running uphill without eventually needing a break. Well, we did get a pullback, but more on that later as I cover my weekly performance review. I also told you that Cardano was likely to put in a new all-time high before smart contract integration on September 12th. Well, Cardano did just that, with a new all-time high of $2.65 for a weekly gain of about 23.58% at the time of this recording. It's also worth noting that had you bought a month ago near the bottom, you'd now be up a staggering 124.64%. With hitting new all-time high this early ahead of the upgrade puts us in price discovery mode. And I'd say three to four dollars really isn't out of the question here with three weeks left to go. Ultimately, the cardinal price target for year end is $10, give or take a dollar. So there is a potential 4X even from these levels. Not financial advice as I'm not a licensed financial advisor. However, it's certainly worth, again, your consideration in my opinion. But with that said, the focus of today's video is on Tesla's AI day that took place this past Thursday night. There is already lots of articles and videos covering this. However, there is something I haven't seen anyone touch on just yet. So in today's video, I'll go over a quick summary of the event goals at a high level, what was presented, then get into what I think is a much bigger deal than most realize. My thoughts here are going to definitely be more on the speculative end of the spectrum. And I'll wrap up with the weekly performance review expressed in percentage gain or loss. Major thank you to everyone who has subscribed this past week, bringing the channel to 91 strong. Let's see if we can close August with 100 subscribers for the channel. All right, drop the video an early like and let's get into it. So Tesla's AI day was a highly technical and a deep dive into their neural net video training approach. To be honest, some of the technical details shared were beyond my level of comprehension. I expected that would likely happen considering the event wasn't geared towards the average investor. Its primary goal was to wow and win over top tier talent. So that's top tier talent that can not only understand the true complexity behind what was shared, but also the level of innovation it took Tesla to overcome those limitations to date. And ultimately, top tier talent that can help elevate Tesla even further. The other equally important aspect of this event was to showcase Tesla's technical lead in software, hardware, and AI versus the competition. And in my opinion, if you went into this event thinking Tesla was just a car company, it's hard to come out with the same mindset. Let's face it, you're not going to go to a Ford, GM, Volkswagen, Toyota, or any other legacy automaker event showcasing technology that they are bringing to market and be presented with anything near this level. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. So what did they actually reveal? Well, for a couple of years now, Papa Elon, as my wife likes to call him, has been dropping hints on what would be Tesla's first supercomputer, codename Dojo. Its primary focus, to process the extensive amount of video data produced by the Tesla fleet in order to accelerate the rate of improvements of FSD and finally achieve true autonomy where no human supervision or innovation is actually required. After a quick trip down memory lane to set the state for why this innovation was needed, Tesla director of autopilot and Dojo product lead took the stage. He unveiled the second all in-house designed computer chip named D1 chip. He described its capabilities as a chip with GPU level compute with a CPU level flexibility and twice the network chip level of IO bandwidth. For context, a CPU is designed to handle a wide range of tasks quickly, but are limited to the number of tasks that can run simultaneously. A GPU is designed to quickly render high resolution images and video concurrently. In other words, this chip is designed to take on large number of high resolution images and videos from the eight onboard cameras, process them quickly by running tasks concurrently, you know, think annotation, stitch them together and whatever other processing Tesla needs, then return the result of that compute on a speed level not seen from anything currently on sale. And because a picture is worth a thousand words, this is the scale of the magnitude of improvement this represents over a leading GPU. Taking things further, from the D1 chip base to scale up to the Dojo level supercomputer, all Tesla has to do, and all overly simplifying things here, what they did as they said, and I quote, seamlessly connect the chip together, that's 500,000 of them, without adhesive. 
to create the dojo training tile you see on the screen right now. The cool thing is they're now running the training tile and actually getting some really good results out of it. The next step, which they haven't yet completed, is to take those training tiles, connect them together, and assemble Dojo. When it's all said and done, this would make Dojo the most powerful supercomputer the world has ever seen. A true purpose-built AI neural network training supercomputer. So at this point, they defined a problem, they presented a solution, and generally speaking, outlined a task ahead with putting Dojo together to unlock true autonomy. If you're an engineer in this field of work, you're pretty much geeking out at this point. And this is where it got even more interesting. In typical Tesla fashion, Elon takes back to the stage and introduces one more thing, and it was the Tesla bot. You can see some quick specs on the screen here, and generally speaking, Optimus, that's its name, is intended to perform boring, repetitive, and dangerous tasks. The idea being that this would help reduce the number of humans exposed to those dangerous, hazardous jobs. As Elon said, it would also be a friendly robot that you could technically send to the grocery store or have assist you when you're wrenching in your car, for example. The actual crazy part is that conceptually, everything software-wise that would be needed for this robot to function and operate already exists in Tesla's cars. This would essentially be a different way to package the Tesla tech and unlock new use cases. I will link the full presentation in the description should you be interested in watching it for yourself. Tesla is currently projecting to have a working prototype by end of next year. Skeptics will look at Optimus and think, why the robot? It's just another distraction that may hinder Tesla's ability to deliver the Cybertruck, the Semi, in the coming year. Tesla supporters will likely see the bot as a great marketing tool to get some buzz going around Tesla and get potential recruits excited about the future of Tesla as a company that it is on the bleeding edge of AI, neural nets, and robotics. But here's why I think this robot is a much bigger deal than people actually realize. For a while now, I've had this idea in the back of my mind that the end goal for every technology innovation Elon is pushing isn't for use cases on Earth. Now, now, I know this is going to sound crazy, but stick with me and it'll make sense. Let's walk through each company and their goal. Tesla transition humanity to sustainable energy with solar, smart EVs, and autonomy. Boring, solve congestion through tunneling of various sizes, SpaceX unlocking space exploration and making life multiplanetary. Starlink, create true worldwide connectivity, and Neuralink, human-machine interface. If you think about it, each company complements the other. Elon's ultimate goal is to get us to Mars. Initially, living on the surface of Mars would be quite challenging, and that's going to be due to the temperature swings and the radiation. The boring company tunneling tech could be utilized to build underground habitats. Those habitats would need to be powered by something, so think solar batteries. EVs, unlike combustion engines, do not require oxygen and can be recharged with solar. Starlink deployed around Earth and Mars would create multi-planetary connectivity, and SpaceX gets us to Mars. Kimball Musk, Elon's brother, forming in a container technology could be utilized to cultivate food sustainably until we figure out how to cultivate the soil on Mars. Now, I told you this video is going to be more on the speculative side, right? So, but assuming that I haven't lost you yet, let's now talk about how the bot fits in. The commercial space industry is in its infancy. When you think about building in space, though there's this new space hotel opening in 2027, and the various deep space exploration missions that NASA is planning for the coming decades, would you rather send a human to a foreign world to see if it's hospitable or send a robot that can perform human-like functions? With the AI and neural nets, you could potentially get the Tesla bot to man the early missions to Mars and help set up equipment and camp ahead of human arrival. The first mission to Mars isn't until the second half of the decade. Assuming the bot is ready for prime time in 2023 to 2024, this would align nicely with the Moon and Mars mission timelines. You could potentially use the Tesla bot for this exact purpose. It would also be ideal for any other space-related manufacturing or mining. All those use cases would qualify as repetitive and dangerous tasks. All the companies under the Elon umbrella do collaborate on various levels. For example, Tesla and SpaceX engineers collaborate closely, and the tech found in Tesla cars is derived from aerospace. The steel for the Cybertruck is what is used for Starship, on the flip side, the solar tile, batteries, and UI used in the current Crew Dragon spaceship is from Tesla. At its core, the same autonomous technology is used in the Crew Dragon ship as well as the cars. The bottom line here, the Tesla bot, in my opinion, is an integral piece to Elon's space exploration and Mars colonization ambitions. Now, I don't think he could have come out and said exactly that on stage without the media having a field day with it, but time will tell if I'm correct 
but I wanted to get this on record because again, I believe that this is where this is all leading to. As a Tesla investor, this makes me that much more bullish, right? The aspirations that Elon and his teams at the various companies have go beyond what the competition is even thinking about. Tesla is a multi-decade, multi-faceted growth story, and I, for one, can't wait to see it play out. I'm curious to know if you think this is way too outlandish or if this makes sense to you. Leave your comments below. All right, so let's switch over and talk weekly portfolio performance expressed in percentage gain or loss. And I came into the week on a decline and was already down by nearly 3% when the market opened on Monday. The lowest point hit pre-market on Thursday with a 9.27% drop. This was on the back of the Fed meeting minute release and the fact that there is language suggesting asset tapering by the Feds could actually start late this year versus early next year as previously thought. As always, that gave market participants a great excuse to take some profit, locking in their gains resulting in a broad market pullback. And I personally ended the week down 3.70%. Generally speaking, the dip was once again bought, pushing all three major indices back near record high by the time Friday closed. I, of course, also took advantage of this and bought some ChargePoint and more Hive blockchain at a nice discount. Now, let's be clear, despite all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt being pushed around in the mainstream media, the vast majority of economists and fund managers expect the market will close higher by the end of the year. So. My recommendation, again, not financial advice, but my recommendation nonetheless, is that you buy your favorite stocks when the market is down or trading sideways, then hold when it's rocketing up and enjoy the gains. And with that, this will do it for today's video. Hopefully you found the content insightful, and if so, please drop the video a like and share with your friends as it greatly helps the channel grow. For my newcomers, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future content just like this. As a reminder, I post every Sunday and occasionally during the week. As always, thank you for watching, stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.